to the mood and all of a sudden it stopped. <laughs> it's alive. No. Everything's alive. <laughs> Except a few people we think they are, but they're not. They're walking dead zombies. <laughs> Bill Gates and a few others. <laughs> Is anybody listening? <laughs> okay, here we go. Seventh Canto. Instructions for the Civilized Human Beings, text number 11 of chapter 15. Dvavya yagnir yaksamanam. What does it say, 11 up there? Uh, it was, but now what happened? You changed to 11? 
Oh, you didn't like the 10th verse, no. <laughs> Which one did you do yesterday, Marge? I did a lot of happy verses. Yeah, the last one was the 10th and we did Oh, okay, so 11 then, okay, so. Here we go. Tasma daivo papanena. Mudya nena pi dharma vittam. Santu stohar haha kuryan. Nityanai mitti ki kriyaha. Tasma daivo papanena. <coughs> Munya nena pidharma vitten. Santus har ha ha kur. Tantus ta har a ha kuryan. Nityanai mikti ki kiriaha. Tasma daivo pananena. Munya nena pidharma vitta. Santus to har aha kuryan. Nityanai mitti ki kriyaha. Tasmat. Therefore, daiva upapane na. Obtainable very easily by the grace of the Lord. Muni anena. With food prepared in ghee and offered to the Supreme Lord. Api. Indeed, Dharmavit, one who is actually advanced in religious principles, Santusta, very happily, Aha, Aha, day after day, Koryan, one should perform, Nityanai Mittiki, Regular and occasional kriyaha duties. Okay, translation. Therefore, day by day, one who is actually aware of religious principles and is not heinously envious of poor animals should happily perform daily sacrifices. And those for certain occasions with whatever food is available easy by, easily by the grace of the Lord. I'll read it again. Therefore, day by day, one who is actually aware of religious principles and is not heinously envious of poor animals should happily perform daily sacrifice. And those for certain occasions with whatever food is available easily by the grace of the Lord 
Srila Prabhupada's purport. The word dharmavit, meaning one who knows the actual purpose of religion, is very significant. As explained in Bhagavad Gita, sarva dharmam pravikshit mam mamikam saranam braja. Becoming Krishna consciousness is the topmost stage in understanding of religious principles. One who reaches this stage performs the archana process in devotional service. Anyone, whether a grihasta or a sannyasi, can keep small deities of the Lord suitably packed or, if possible, installed, and thus worship the deities of Radha and Krishna, Sita Rama, Lakshmi Narayana, Lord Jagannatha, or Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by offering food prepare in ghee and then offered the and offering the sanctified prasad to the forefathers, demigods, and other living entities as a matter of routine daily work. All the centers of the Krishna conscious movement have deity worship programs very nicely going on in which his food is offered to the deity and distributed to the first-class brahmanas and vaishnavas and even to the people in general. This performance of sacrifice brings complete satisfaction. The members of the Krishna conscious movement engage daily in transcendental activities. Thus, in our Krishna conscious movement, there is no question at all of killing animals. Umagyan timedandasya gyanajana salakaya Chaksu un militam yena tasmai shri guru vena maha. Nama um vishnu padaya krishna pastaya bhutale shri makti bhakti vedanta swami ti namine. Namaste saraswati deve gaudavani pacharine nivrase sa sunyavari pastyatya de satarine. Panchakalpa turu vischa kripa sindhu ve bacha patitanam bhavane vyo vaishnave vyo namaho namaha. Shri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasiri Gaur Bhakta Rinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So this verse follows the previous one, talking about the heinous activities of killing poor animals which goes on in the name of sacrifice, but there is personal interest involved in these, and people perform these things, either to become uh, recognized as performers of Vedic sacrifices to get some prestige, or in order to enjoy <coughs> the, the, uh, the fruits of the sacrifices. In other words, to uh, eat meat. <laughs> So uh, here, but Prabhupada ends the purport in our Krishna conscious movement under these things are allowed. There's no even, not even allowed, but even the devotees don't even consider thinking about these things because they're so, as it says, he, heinously, that means in a very mean-spirited and a very envious mood, causing harm to un un animals unnecessarily. <coughs> And that's also offense because Krishna sees all living entities. Samoham Savabhute Shunamay Dvesha Srinapriya. He's equal to everyone. Although the bodies may be different, his love and his compassion towards all living entities are equal. He doesn't make distinctions like we make distinctions because he is the father of all living entities and therefore. Uh, one who transgresses religious principles in the name of an, some kind of uh, statement within the Vedas or uh, for sense gratification becomes implicated in sinful activities. And as these sinful activities accumulate, and then it becomes vicious and the rest, the whole society goes to hell. <laughs> Killing animals or killing babies in the womb, both of these things have tremendous, horrible karmic reactions, which may, may appear within a, s a short time or may appear in an extended time. But karma can never be overcome unless one engages in devotional service. So the whole world is, they can't figure out why they suffer so much or why they can't get it right because 
they're making so many arrangements to adjust the material energy to become happy, but at the same time, they're committing sinful activities, and they expect to be happy. <laughs> it's contradictory. <laughs> you're doing something wrong, and it's, you're getting a bad reaction for that. At the same time, you're planning to become happy. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's, it's ludicrous when you look at it. So this is how society goes on. And Prabhupada wants to make a point here that, you know, in our society, uh, we have very nice foodstuffs, and these foodstuffs are offered in ghee. <laughs> Prabhupada mentions it. It's mentioned in the translation and also in the, uh, well, it's mentioned in the word-for-word -word tra uh, transliteration, and it's also mentioned in the purport. And Prabhupada started this movement by having all the cooks cook in Pure ghee, or ghee, anyway, as best we could get it. And uh, since then, the movement has kind of transgressed in, or when we say diverted in other areas, and we use all kinds of other cooking items, thinking it's either healthy or it's economical. Because ghee can also be expensive in some areas of the world. And therefore, in order to cut down on the economics, we are like, Getting some all different kinds of cheap, cheap by cheap, cheap, cheap oils, really oils that are. I did a little uh, follow up with one of our doctors, a very reputable doctor in America, just to find out the effects of taking these different oils that we were using in our cooking. And he uh, he showed me some pretty horrible statistics. How they call blood cause blood clots and. Uh, restrictions of the arteries, and then ultimately can cause a heart attack or a stroke. <laughs> so if, it's, if a person doesn't work hard, if they work hard, generally they won't have too many problems. But still, the point is it's not healthy. Ghee is healthy, but not in large quantities. <laughs> you can get intoxicated on that. We're not followers of Charvak Muni. You know, he says... Whatever you do, get ghee. You can steal it, you can borrow it, whatever you do, no, somehow or other, get ghee because ghee is the goal of life. <laughs> He's an atheist. <laughs> He's a, a avowed atheist. Everybody knows his, his non-religious principle. <laughs> and so this is a time of worship. But we... You know, we understand ghee is a very important part coming from the the sacred cow and can be used nicely for cooking and for deity worship also, for performing sacrifices, Agni Hotras, and also for doing Abhishek's. So ghee is a very, uh, what do you say, uh, beneficial substance. It performs so many. So Prabhupada wants to make that point, so he makes it puts it in two, two point places within this particular verse. Uh, here also we have uh, hmm. one who actually knows the pur purpose of religion. <clears throat> and then Prabhupada follows, the purpose of religion is not to um, s perform religions for any material benefit. Um, trying to become wealthy, trying to become even healthy, <laughs> trying to become, what we say, popular, trying to get a position, trying to become a learned scholar on the Vedas. It's like Lord Chaitanya says, na danam, na janam, na sundarim. And so we know <clears throat> not dunam is wealth, not janam followers. And another one, Sundarim has two meanings. One Lord Chaitanya gives that is different from the actual meaning that is generally given, which means the pleasure for the opposite sex. He said Sundarim also means not wanting to be known as a great orator of Vedic knowledge. <laughs> In other words, using religion in order to popularize yourself. And sometimes people just 
study books, and they become more interested in the philosophy in the sense that it becomes the focus rather than the devotional mood. And they may also be, they can give good classes, they know the scriptures well. They also have, obviously have devotion. But the main thing is the philosophy. And the philosophy is a, in a, is a light in the direction that we need to go into. And that direction is the direction of bhakti. So gyan and karma activities and and uh, philosophical understandings are supportive and necessary ultimately to move to the goal of life in Prema Pumartha Mahan. As Rupa Goswami explains in his uh, introduction to Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he said, Ayabila Sita Sunya, Jnana Kamaranavritam, Anukalena Krishna Silana Bhakti Uttama. So he rejects both activities that bring that are desirable for fruit of gain and activities that are desirable for philosophical speculation on the absolute truth. And then he goes and finally gives the clear understanding. It has to be in relationship to Krishna and it has to be it has to be for Krishna and he has to be with the desire to please Krishna. This is pure bhakti. And also in the uh, in the Bhagavatam it says Savai Pum Samparo Dharmo Yato Bhakti Yahoksaje Hoituki Apriyata Yayatma Suprasiditi. So this is where devotional service is understood in its essence. It has to be unmotivated. So that covers the verse by Rupa Goswami. And then uninterrupted by any other, anything else. So coming to that stage is pure devotional service. But that takes purification of heart. So as we perform our devotional service, worshiping the Lord in his deity form, chanting and dancing, purifying ourselves, hearing and philosophical understandings and learning how to apply them. We gradually purify our heart where spontaneity becomes natural. Sometimes devotees think, well, how can I become spontaneous? How can I be uninterrupted in my devotional service? It comes at a certain stage of your practice when you become attracted to devotional service in a, in a natural way. Because our, our natural love for Krishna, oh, our love for Krishna is natural. It's, it's part of our existence. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhuka Bunoi Srabhanadi Siddhi Jitte Kori Udoi. So that verse explains that the essence of our existence is love for Krishna. And love for Krishna is exhibited by service to Krishna. So, therefore, uninterrupted devotional service will come at a certain stage of our devotional service. But then we have to practice that by keeping the mind engaged in activities in devotional service. The only problem in, in spiritual life is the mind. In fact, that's the only problem in the world. <laughs> It's the mind that causes all the problems. Uh, therefore, there's always conflict because of different ideas on how life should be lived <laughs> or how things should be done. So as long, as long as we can practice keeping that mind connected to the activities of devotional service, we're always um, free from the influence of the material energy. <clears throat> and so that's practice. Learn. I remember we were, <clears throat> you know, practicing devotional service in the early days. We would always be taught that use every minute to somehow or other serve Krishna. Don't allow your mind to go anywhere else. They would teach us that. To, that now it's not that we can somehow or other take a break from devotional service. Sometimes we see that especially in this area of the world. Oh, the warm weather's coming out. Down to the shore. Okay, two weeks off. I'll be back with more enthusiasm. How do you all? <laughs> you know, I have to take care of my body in ways that only I understand is needed. <laughs>
So yeah, so that uh, I remember also in the, in uh, Krishna consciousness. I don't know how true this is, but <laughs> it has a little element of viability in it. We we were preached that summertime is the illusion. <laughs> Because summertime gives you the idea that this material world is not so bad. <laughs> and you can look forward to, you know, taking it easy, relaxing, and, you know, go for that suntan lotion and a few other things that come along with summer. <laughs> so in other words, uh, the niceties that appear, as, a, as we define them, niceties, there seem to be ways where we can become less enthusiastic or less engaged in devotional service. We have to be careful of that. There was one devotee in our in Krishna in, in New Vrindavan. Um, I won't mention his name, but I probably will give his name away. But when I tell this story, but I won't. He used to come in the summertime to New Vrindavan and stay the whole summer. And then when it would get cold, he'd leave. <laughs> and I don't know, we, we didn't know where he went, but then he would come back again in the summertime next year. And then he would do that every year, for a few years. So we gave him the name Summerswara. <laughs> Summerswara. <laughs> I guess you know who I'm talking about, no? <laughs> I shouldn't say his name in class, it might embarrass him, because he's a very advanced devotee. <laughs> we gave him the name Summershwara, so he's one who was <laughs> like that. So, yeah, and so, but later on, I guess he learned that was, that wasn't a good program, so he became, he's a very wonderful devotee and does wonderful service for Srila Prabhupada's mission now. Yeah, so this is how uh, things were going on. So you have to be careful of the niceties that appear in the form of this material energy, not to get diverted from Krishna consciousness. Because these are, Maya has so many ways. Maya knows exactly where your weak spot is. And to, f to perform devotional service, you have to know you're also, you're also, also weak spot. Everybody may have a, a weaker spot. It doesn't mean everybody has a weak spot, but it may be have a weaker spot. And Maya will hit you there. <laughs> and the example was given just like you're, if you're boxing in the ring and you're fighting with someone. If someone hits you and you get cut or hurt in that area, that area becomes more vulnerable. So then that fighter will look to hit you in that same area again because he knows it's, it's more vulnerable and more weaker. So Maya is like that. And Maya does that not only just not to push you down, but to, learn, to teach you where your weak spots are so you can guard against that or change that and then become strong in that area. So it's always good to see, to take introspection. Where is my weak spot in Krishna consciousness? Where is it where I'm most likely to be diverted away from Krishna conscious or might be susceptible for sense gratification. So it's nice to uh, take these inventories. And as soon as you cover your weak spot, then Maya looks for another one. She won't let you alone until you become a pure devotee. <laughs> That's the way it is. <laughs> That's her job, to make you a pure devotee by giving you challenges and obstacles so you can somehow or other strengthen your Krishna consciousness. And for one who's serious, they can welcome these things as opportunities for advancement. Like that. So here, Prabhupada goes on again. He says, this is the most important. Know what is the actual principles of religion? And then he quotes that famous verse, which is often quoted in the Bhagavad Gita, 1866. That Krishna is saying, Masu uh, Chaha, surrender to me. Don't hesitate, don't worry, don't f fear. These three things are translated in the last Ma Suchaha. Don't hesitate, don't worry, don't fear. And Krishna gives assurance that if you <clears throat> simply depend on me and surrender to me, 
and I'll take care of you completely. And he does that too, that's his promise. He takes care of his devotees 100%. And if you're 90% surrendered, he takes care of you 90%. <laughs> If you're 100% surrendered, then it's complete. So you have to see how much am I surrendered? What am I holding back? What is it about Christ in material things that I still have attachment for? I still can't give up potato chips. I go at night and at 1 o'clock in the morning, I break into the cab cabinet and I get my potato chips. And, and so, but I can't give it up, you know. You know, well, I'm just using that as an example. <laughs> <laughs> it might be something else, maybe Glubjamins or something else. <laughs> but you know, we have something, some little skeleton in the closet there, nobody knows. <laughs> uh, but in this verse, uh, Narada Muni, in his Narada Bhakti Sutras, he, uh, he deals with this particular verse and he gives it an explanation of what Krishna is actually saying in this verse. And his explanation is that um, by, don't think by you can somehow or other save yourself through your own process of um, practicing. In other words, give up, he says, give up all varieties of religion. That's what Krishna says. What he means is, the idea of that chanting mantras, performing different pujas, giving in charity, Jai Sri Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. In other words, the different aspects of devotional service or even spiritual practice, a devotee may be, you know, hanging on to, thinking that these things will make them advance like that. And Krishna is basically, this is Narada Muni's explanation on this verse. He says, you know, give up all these ideas that you, you can somehow save yourself through all these other processes. And just uh, depend on me, surrender to me, and follow the process given by me, coming through your representative, the spiritual master. That's what that verse actually means, like that. So, you know, it's not like... Uh, surrender is nebulous or has some c unclear understanding. He says, just stop thinking you can save yourself. <laughs> you can't. You should make an effort simply to have Krishna give you mercy so he can save you. That's, that's where our effort is, looking for ways to surrender to Krishna so we can receive his mercy and his care like that. Like last night, uh, for some reason... This is the first time it happened to me in about four months. I woke up in the middle of the night. I was completely wide awake, one o'clock in the morning. And I was thinking, there's no way I'm going to go back to sleep. <laughs> I'm just like completely awake. So where did I go? To the cupboard and got the potato chips? No. <laughs> Club <Jimmy. laughs> Then I looked, and all of them, they were all gone because I got them the day before. <laughs> I forgot the stock. <laughs> so no, I went for my japa beads, and I chanted, I chanted seven rounds, and then I felt, you know, like okay, I got a head start on my japa. By two thirty in the morning, I had seven rounds done. But then that uh, nidra muni came. <laughs> He starts sneaking in again. So I somehow or other went back to sleep. Not voluntarily. <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes, you know, we we find ourselves in different situations. What 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 do we do? Take shelter of Maya or we can take shelter of Krishna. So we have to try to take shelter of Krishna when Maya comes or things change. And that's the thing is we we are dependent on the mercy of the Lord. We're dependent on the care of the Lord. And that's explained by Sanatana Goswami that uh, there are six principles that make up the process of surrender 
to the Lord, complete surrender, the saranagati. And that is, one of them is complete dependent on the mercy of the Lord. Completely depending on the mercy of the Lord. In other words, making the, more, the Lord the object of everything we do and everything. We, and that, that takes practice. It's not something you can just do because we're conditioned. And conditioned means moving in a certain direction. <clears throat> That's what conditioning means, moving in a certain direction. Sometimes people think, well, I got an idea to change my life and I'm going to do it. But then they start doing it and they realize it's not so easy. So what is that? It's due to our previous conditioning This simply doesn't disappear. That conditioning still forces you to go in the same direction you're going. So it takes what is a little determination and constant practice. And you apply certain principles or certain religious principles and then you work at it. And gradually, gradually, you start pushing away the old habits and developing spiritual habits or spiritual characteristics. One very <coughs> intelligent devotee in our movement, he's no longer with us. Uh, what was his name? The scientist, Sadaputta. He explained how karma works in an interesting way. He said, he said you're going in your car and you're going 50 miles an hour and and then all of a sudden you come to a, a turn. So in order for you to make that turn, you have to slow down in the direction you're going. Otherwise, the force of your speed will push you in the same direction. So in the same way, when you try to make a change, you have to slow down in the way you're going. <laughs> and then gradually redirect yourself in the way you want to go. <laughs> So this, uh, this is a very interesting way we sometimes devotees think, well, I'm going to change. But yeah, you have to practice that. <laughs> Condition nature or habits are second nature. They're second nature. So it takes some time. That's why when we practice chanting Hare Krishna, we don't expect to come to the purified stage. We keep practicing, practicing, practicing. Sometimes I see devotees who keep practicing, 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 and after some time they get discouraged. And they actually, sometimes they even think, oh, I should give up this chanting and maybe I'll just go to kirtans or do other services. Or maybe I'll chant when I feel like it. But then they no longer chant 16 rounds anymore because they think it's too hard or it's, I've been trying it for years. It's just so difficult. But the question comes back, what are you doing wrong that may be the cause of you cannot develop that attraction for chanting? And then that should be the question. Not what, what, it's not about the chanting, it's about wh how we're approaching the chanting. And even if we're approaching it in the right way, still we have to have some determination. Because determination is the principle of success in Krishna consciousness. And this is a very important point that Prabhupada makes in, in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam when he explains that some people say that uh, Krishna consciousness or devotional service is easy and some say it's difficult. So he makes a, this kind of like rhetorical statement and he answers the statements later on. He says, well, what is it? Is it easy or difficult? And he says the difference is determination. For those who are determined, be, then it's easy or natural. Those who are not determined, you'll find it, it becomes very difficult. And determined is fortified by good association with devotees, but then again, and Krishna or the Shastras mentioned that determination is strengthened when we give up sense gratification. <laughs> and especially the desire for sex life, <laughs> either subtle or gross. Of course, gross for sure, but even that subtle sex life can also dilute the determination effort. So determination is strong when uh, there is no desire or no activities towards the sense gratification anymore. And that's the feature of the will. 
as it's explained by <clears throat> the acharyas, that you, if you determine, you can perform the, the activities of devotional service very naturally. A determination is one of the features that Rupa Goswami makes in his bhakti uh, Upadesha Marita. He said, Utsahan Nishchayat Daryat. And Nishchayat is uh, his determination. And Daryat is patience, and Utsahan is enthusiasm. So he makes these a prerequisite for the practice of devotional service, successful practice of devotional service. So determination is such an important principle because the, the material energy will also cause you to, you know, not cause you, but it will challenge your determination in different ways. Uh, let me see. There was an example I can't remember that particular example. It's so good. Determination. Oh yeah, very good. Thank you. The uh, yeah, the little bird laying the eggs on the shore of the, uh, or was it taking the water out of the uh, ocean? Oh yeah, she wanted her eggs back. And she was thinking, I got to get my eggs back. So she uh, started to peck with her beak and trying to dry up the ocean. <laughs> yeah, this was a little bird compared to an ocean. Ocean is just laughing at her. But then again, it was a Garuda came, saw his bird friend <laughs> struggling, and then Garuda jumped in, and then the ocean got a little concerned that <laughs> looks like I'm defeated. <laughs> so he returned the eggs. <laughs> so this is a very important principle when you think about it. You know, what is our effort in devotional service? But accessing the mercy and power of the Lord, one can perform activities that are difficult to perform. So both that determination and the dependence on the mercy of the Lord, which is another feature of determination, makes one really a steady in devotional service. And until we develop this steadiness, then, the, then our, uh, our taste in devotional service cannot develop. It won't be, it'll come and go as, to, as our, as that, because of that steadiness is not there. So steadiness comes, as Rupa Goswami, no, I'm sorry, Bhakti Vinod Thakur mentions one. We get rid of 30, uh, three quarters of our anarthas, 75% of the anarthas. Then steadiness is a feature of the practice of devotional service. But still, we can practice steadiness now. Uh, Shiva Ram Maharaj mentions a different nature of steadiness. He talks about steadiness and steadiness in devotion, becoming constantly steady in worshiping the Lord in that mood of devotion, as opposed to the activities of devotional service. Not opposed, but along with the activities of devotional service. That keeping your consciousness always in the mood of trying to serve Krishna, in that mood of pleasing Krishna. That's a type of steadiness that also brings about steadiness in all in activities also. Okay, so just, it's always good to review the whole process of devotional service because it's very intricate. And we have to remember that it's very subtle and we should know all these different finer points because otherwise Maya will defeat us. Okay, so any questions or comments? Yes. Um, Uddhava Mitra Prabhu. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for a nice lecture again. So I, I wonder, I'm always impressed by this, you mentioned uh, to completely depend on Krishna, like the first step of the Sharanagati. So then Krishna, if you depend and you pray, give some intelligence and then you need to act about this and then I feel again lost. And then I think maybe I'm using, spending too much time, uh, like, you know, 
using my intelligence. And then I wonder myself either uh, we should uh, strive for next step or it's higher just to depend somehow because this dependence. Dependence is a feature of, a, of surrender. It's also a feature of, of advancement. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why Krishna will sometimes give you or send Maya just to help you become more dependent on Him. He'll send Maya to you in order for you to get a little challenge in your, just to wake you up that you need to depend on Him more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's hard just to depend, not depending on intelligence uh, or your realizations you got. Yeah, well, your intelligence will bring you to the realizations as you practice them. But you have to use your intelligence to depend. And dependent is there, as Prabhupada said, he said, this is an interesting statement, he said, if you remember the lotus feet of the Lord, you will never be, he uses the word, uh, uh, impeded. You know what impeded means? You will never be you never be uh, blocked in your devotional life. If you remember, if you remember the, the lotus feet of the Lord, so we take darsha, we see the Lord's lotus feet here. We keep that, that, that those two feet in our mind. We can remember them throughout the day. As soon as you remember that, there's no blocks in your devotional service. Yeah, because I found out that then, like, even though. Many times I don't know what to do next step, like things just fix. If you depend, things just fix eventually. It just happens automatically. Yeah. Well, that's mercy. <laughs> that means Krishna is pleased and he's helping you. If you have the right attitude, even if you're not perfect in how you execute your activities, if you have the right attitude, in other words, if you're humble, then Krishna will help you. <laughs> Thank you. Just like before you go out on books, you're going out, sometimes you feel, oh, today I don't feel as enthusiastic as I usually do. And then so there, then there you pray to Krishna, depend on Krishna, and then things change. <laughs> Yeah, what else are we going to depend on? Our intelligence is not, cannot overcome the effects of the material energy. Maya is too strong. Even the most intelligent of the intelligent cannot, can. Prabhupada said there was one man, he, he wanted to beat death. He's thinking, how can I not die <laughs> in the body he had? So... He's thinking, well, Yamaraj is a gentleman, so I'll just take some very bad-smelling stool and I'll smear it all over my body, and then Yamaraj won't come near me. <laughs> that was his... But Yamaraj came anyway. <laughs> So he was thinking how to beat death, but so he, he was thinking, well, you know, this is, maybe this will work. <laughs> so you can't beat death, and that means the body, body will end, but you can beat death by becoming Krishna conscious. As soon as you become Krishna conscious, you can overcome the process of transmigration. And then you just leave this body and then go back to the spiritual world. That's not death, that's liberation. <laughs> mm -hmm. What about, like, can you consider this also devotion when just meditating what to do, what Krishna wants to do next, next step? Because sometimes then I think, like, I'm spending too much time, like, trying to figure out what to do, what he thinks, maybe... If you, if you can't think of anything to do, just chant. <laughs> That's the thing you can always do at any time. As soon as you chant, you'll think of what to do next. 
<laughs> no, when the mind is bewildered, sometimes I spend too much time trying to figure out how to go uh, to figure out next step, and then said maybe it's better to spend uh, time doing practical service. But when the mind is bewildered, somehow I want to fix first. Mm -hmm. yeah, just chant. As soon as you chant, you'll get you'll get the understanding of what you're what's next. Actually, Prabhupada writes that in the Bhagavad Gita. I just read it about a week ago. He writes, Krishna guides the devotee and tells him what they're supposed to do next in their devotional life. Yeah, he writes that. Krishna is there to tell you, oh, this service is next, or this is what you need to do next. So if you're listening, then... You get it. If you're not listening, <laughs> then you won't get it. But if you're chanting, you can start to listen, then you'll get it. <laughs> chanting does everything. As soon as you chant, everything becomes clear. <laughs> Thank you. And even if you can't come up with anything, you're chanting and that's the best. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupan ki jai. <laughs>